Now this girl has become a liability. Now she finds out that there are two other beautiful women as she is. And this guy is trying to prove a point. That I can marry somebody who is more beautiful than you. And you people feel I'm molesting you. I am rather doing you a favor. What she did to Ephia was worse than what she, he did to the two. In the same alabaster, I have seen a man that came into the house to marry. So now, the structures now, it feels like an interrogation. The background checks is unbelievable. This guy said he was a mining engineer as soon as he was a driver's mate. I'm telling you, even the name he came with was not his name. Uh, we are building the course of before I say I do. Before I say I do. Um, I love the, the preamble that we were dealing with yesterday. Uh, I watched a little teaser. The apostle was talking about uh, your husband or your man can be a very good banker and a bad, bad husband. And so you marry a man, not a banker. You marry a man. You relate to a man, to a woman, not to a minister, not to an MP, not to a preacher. And that is why uh, this particular forum is extremely pertinent, crucial, and important. It is going to help us to be able to build up. And uh, the grace of God and the cause of God will be a portion. Now, do me a favor. Uh, share the page. Uh, copy the link. Put it somewhere. Every um, group where you belong to, go put the link over there. And uh, let's do this all to the glory of the Lord, it is going to be of a tremendous blessing. Share uh, with your friends and let us work. I came in yesterday uh, having listened to all the speakers for this particular forum and uh, we were sharing some of the causes of uh, uh, the synopsis of marriage and relationship. Honestly speaking, Pastor Dan, many people are bleeding. Maybe let me put it this way. Many relationships and marriages are bleeding. Because the motives or the fundamental motives are wrong. There are so many misnomers that goes on. Uh, many people feel like I'm growing, I need to marry. That is why they got into a relationship. Others feel um, this whole thing is, you know, some kind of economic remedy. That is why they are in there. Others feel like uh, I, I need to prove a point in society. My ex left me. I need to prove to my ex that I can still be successful with this further relationship and marriage. And that is why they are in there. There, is a, there was a particular, yeah, yeah, Ekutia marriage. We had one like that. You know, the gentleman was uh, uh, in a very reputable church uh, in Accra and uh, came to Alabaster at the time I was out of the country, uh, met this beautiful woman, sweet business woman. She dealt with business in uh, Makola, and she was doing amazing. Or dressing with Jinawa, I said, yes. Her jewelry, her clothes, her shoes, her bags, the car she drive, and all that. This guy came, and uh, the story was that uh, his wife had passed, uh, and uh, he had a little son, who was about 12 years old, and said uh, the wife left this boy with me. I mean, when I even heard the story, there's a widower who is trying to get married to uh, a fear. I said, come on, we, we are so grateful to, and then uh, when it came to uh, praying into it and all that, it was just, uh, at a point I was telling these guys, let's study this guy a little bit. You know, I my discernment is such that ubi kana sem we be a mubruni no kana sem chreme nang kamea. The story is fake. But digia it will come out like that. So when they told me the story, I was out of the country, but I still told them, 
I don't feel it. I don't feel it. Let's wait a little bit. Um, and then a few was telling, oh, no, 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 no. You know, I can see Mrs. Cato in America. You are, you know, you know, uh, I don't want to add the other name so that, <laughs> you know. But you know Afia very well. You were, at the time you were in Alabasta, you were protocol uh, before you became uh, part of the cash team and before you became, and you are watching right now. So, uh, you know, you know the person I'm talking about. You know, Afia was doing so amazingly until this guy came from Christ Temple. I mean, it was something that um, everybody knew about Alabasta and so they said, no, Papa, this is my chance. I've been waiting, you know. Uh, and uh, as a businesswoman, let me. That is okay. Allow them to. You will not believe. Apparently, this guy has nobody who was dead. He has been married for to two women. First marriage, he molested, abused this woman and left her. And the point is, she, he is trying to prove to this woman, only beautiful women follow me. Married the second woman, did worse to that woman, dump her. Came to Alabaster with the story, I want to marry you because my wife is dead. Asumua Amale got married to this girl. When I return, the marriage department of Christ Temple got involved with me. We have a problem and we need to deal with it. This guy has left church. The pastor is in front of crowd. He doesn't want to come. He beats the girl. He has run his her business down. He, he has quandered all the money. Her investments have been liquidated. Every one of them. A fear had become a pauper. And nobody. In just a space of three years. All her cluster of shops. Gone. They are torn in now. Everything gone. Now this girl has become a liability. Now she finds out that. There are two other beautiful women as she is. And this guy is trying to prove a point. That I can marry somebody who is more beautiful than you. And you people feel I'm molesting you. I am rather doing you a favor. What she did to Ephia was worse than what she, he did to the two. In this same alabaster I have seen a man that came into the house to marry. So now the structures now, it feels like an interrogation. The background checks is unbelievable. This guy said he was a mining engineer. Asuma, he was a driver's mate. I'm telling you. Even the name he came with was not his name. Driver's mate. As mate. Across circle, across circle. Mate. Yeah. Soon as I'm mate. I mean, we can be in a counseling and this guy said, I, I've got a call. Uh, you know, Anglo Gold Ashanti is calling him. I need to go and install a machine. And we can stop the counseling and then he leaves. He, he says he's a mining engineer. His job is into rigs and, uh, and all that. The machines that are going underground and all that. They, they, if he doesn't go, there is a machine that will be stuck underground. He needs to go. The counselors will stop the counseling and then he's gone. Two weeks to the marriage, the Holy Spirit told me in the middle of the night whilst I was praying, he said, stop this wedding. I said, on which basis? He said, stop the wedding. I will prove to you when you stop the wedding. Everything is done. 
Cakes are ready, wedding dresses are ready, everything, including places of their honeymoon, wedding class, everything is set. I stopped the wedding. A fight broke out between the two of them, the lady and the gentleman. They fought, and during the fighting, the truth came. As more, even the cost of the wedding was paid for by the lady's auntie's hotel she was managing at East Lagos. The gentleman's penny is not in anything. Driver's mate, not his name, not where he, he lives and not where he fellowships. The church he mentioned, even the letter that was brought to us was a fabricated letter. So now I'm telling you, this thing Call marriage and relationship for <laughs> because it is more than and when you look at the guy Obana or Botongs and me I can boldly tell you say your tongues on why you but no fire you fake on authority I will say it on authority a kwa we bana ye bumpire no din wo jimu and yam mama saw your driver's mate when him pie. When him said he pie. Oh, bu bu mu over castle we cry in Yeah, you fake. So we have all these people in church environment, and they are you know predators who have come, you know, to prey on vulnerable and innocent people. Yeah. So, I am going to use the opportunity to say that let your desperation come down and rather let your vigilance go up. Yeah. Let your vigilance go up because and, and so now in our structures, before, seriously before we will even approve to take you through counseling, the checks are, you may feel like what is wrong with these people? Yeah. We would dig both of you out. Serious digging. Before even counseling starts, background checks must be done. And we will not tell you we are making a background check. We are not just dealing with people, the, the referees and, and that you gave us. We are going way beyond that. Too many frosters in the house of God. As for the tongues and idiots, a culture of five fake. Yeah. So let us go to what we started. I will not take too much time uh, because we are going to put the numbers on the screen. We're going to take our questions. We're going to pray for you. And today we are going to have a very special ministration briefly online and it's going to be a blessing uh, to you. I started speaking about seasons. The first one I talked about is the market season. The second one I talked about is the butterfly season. The third season. All right. Okay. So the first season I talked about the, the market season is that you are a product. I brought um, two bottles. One is labeled. The other one is not labeled. And then I said that many people today have become like unlabeled bottles on the shelf. If I go to the supermarket and then I find a product, let's say it's an ideal milk sitting on the shelf, but it has no label, I wouldn't know what it, it is. I, so I will not even bother to look at. Many people are on the waiting roll, but they are unlabeled. And because they are unlabeled, you are a product all right. You are the real product all right. But the truth is that because you are unlabeled, nobody wants to patronize you. So I say to you, when you are at the market season, make sure you label yourself. Make sure you label yourself. And then I went further to talk about other things. Uh, I said, one of the things that you need to be extremely careful about and pay attention to is hygiene at the market season 
We talked about a couple of them. Let me just move and tip it up. And the butterfly season is where we have all the beautiful things. Butterflies have beautiful colors. But it doesn't take long for those colors, the wings, to be shed off. And so just like the butterfly, there is a season called the butterfly season where all the beautiful things come in. We take you to the restaurant, we pull the chair for you, we open the car door for you, we buy you ice cream, we buy you gifts, perfumes, and, and jewelry, and all that. We buy and all that. We, we, we pay for your bills, we buy new phones for you, and all that. But that season does not last. Many people are deceived to think that the butterfly season is the actual marriage. And so they get into marriage and that season passes off so quickly and then they feel like my husband has changed so much. Mm -mm. They didn't change. It's just the season that switched. And then the third season is what I call the experimental season. That's the season where you are going to experiment yourself and then you realize that the person I thought was sweet was not actually sweet. And then the fourth season I said is the reality season. That is where the real thing comes out. And that season possibly is where most of you people are now. The reality season. That's the season where people can now begin to stereotype. If this is how marriage is, I don't want to marry. You feel like all men are the same. All women are the same. All right? And then today I will want to talk to you about what I call the result-oriented season. The result-oriented season. In the result-oriented season, that is where, number one, you marry purpose. You marry vision. Apostle Jeffrey right now cannot, or nobody can tell me that Apostle Jeffrey is married to fantasy. To fun. No. Marriage and relationship graduates. It migrates. From let's go have fun. Let's go to the beach. Let's, you know, it migrates to the place of purpose. Because of the schedule I have every Sunday, I get the privilege to watch our mother on lunchtime prayer every Sunday because at that time I am switching from the main service to campus fire and so I have a little time that nobody comes around me I am in the office alone and I'm preparing to move out to the next service and I watch her every Sunday while she's on live her marriage has migrated. Her friendship with our apostle have migrated from the individualistic dimension to a purposeful dimension. She is now married to the vision, to the purpose. If somebody had told that Reverend Mrs. Esther Nyamiche was going to take over House of Faith, we wouldn't have believed it. And suddenly it came that Papa went through a crisis and Mama Esther had to take over. So her marriage had graduated to purpose. So now it is not you are not married to a man and his family. Now you are married to his vision, his assignment, his obligation. That is where it goes to. If somebody had told me that my very good friend who is now remarried, uh, Apostle Felicia Echampo, now is uh, uh, married to a, a very good apostle friend of mine in the United Kingdom. Um, somebody had told me that she was going to take over Aroma Prophetic Ministry. Nobody would believe. But Maxwell died from leukemia at the age of 49. And suddenly, she finds herself in leadership. That is a result-oriented season I'm talking about. Every relationship and marriage goes through these phases. 
And so all the people who get married, you know, you don't have time for me, you don't talk to me, it will fade off. It will fade off at a point. I mean, that is how it's going to be. One son, on Sundays, I am in this direction. My wife is on that direction. Our marriage is now on the oriented, you know, uh, uh, result-oriented season. That's where we are now. When it comes to that, you realize that God took you through certain phases to prepare you for your public revealing. So you come to that particular place. Now you are married to a vision, to an assignment. I know so many people who, you know, and I can go on and on. Bishop Rex Odom's wife, great woman of God, She's also a business woman. That's where we buy all our carpets from. Now she's in charge of Jesus Care Ministries all over the world. She is now married to purpose. Can I develop further and say, you know, when I look at people like Mrs. Joshua, T.B. Joshua's wife, I never knew her. I never saw her. I have never seen her on any platform until the demise of her husband. Suddenly, a leader emerges. All this while, she was married to a man. And now, she is married to a vision. A man is no more. But by the premise of that marriage, she stands in a particular office. So for Akuma Pinya, you know, because your your fun and our pettiness and all that are going to die off. And now you are going to grow up, grow up to that particular dimension. When we used to live at uh, Adenta, we lived there for 10 years. There was this woman, very, very courageous, boisterous, had this amazing husband. The man is very calm, very cool. One day we returned from church to see that the man just collapsed in the morning and that was it. He died. Now the lady was going to rise up to that task. We have two, two MPs in parliament right now who rose up to wear their husband's shoes. That's what I'm talking about. Two MPs. Their husbands died mysteriously. And they had to marry their husband's vision. They had no business. They had no clue about politics, about leadership. Suddenly, the people voted for them based on their husband's credibility. And now they had to leave. Without their husbands, there's no way they are going to win elections. No. So the point is this. All the gentlemen that are watching us, all the ladies that are watching us, the question then becomes, what is your vision? You are making a proposal to, I want to marry you. My question, my reciprocal question should be, what is your vision? What do you stand for? What, what do you represent? Because very soon it will not be you as a person. I will be married to your assignment. So what is your assignment? What is your vision? I will want to know what your vision really and truly is. Number two, in the result-oriented season, you are married to maturity. You are maturity-driven. Pettiness leaves. Who are you talking to? Who sent you that message? It dies off. This is the, 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 the stage where you give your wife, your, your partner space. And that space is a space for maturity. I was saying at Love Talk the other day, I said, my wife knows the, the, the password to all my phones and all my devices. I was intentionally scan her face and her finger prints to all the devices. But I had never seen her open any of the device before. 
every new device I scan her face and her prints. She does the same thing to me. I know her password, but I have never opened her phone to look at anything. Bibi anywa make of our maturity. You see the pettiness that, uh, that, that is killing so many relationships. Give me the password to your phone. What do you want? Give me the password to your phone. I want your phone. <laughs> Why do you want the phone? <laughs> pettiness. You can police him all you can. You are joking. Marriage and relationship comes to the point where it migrates to maturity driven. We are matured. There, there is nothing like when, when your relatives come, we receive them. When mine comes, we resent them. No. Maturity. It is me rather who should be asking, how is your father, babe? How's your mom? I think we should go and bless them. I think we should go and honor them. Maturity. I don't like your mother to come to our house. I don't like, that's pettiness. I'm telling you how so many, and then we go to the third dimension. That's where I'm going to stay in my presentation. In the results oriented season, the third dimension is the problem solving dimension. There are three major dimensions I want to talk about. The third dimension is the problem solving dimension. Now, the point is this. How can I solve problems in relationships and marriages when I don't even know possible problems that exist? How can I be a problem solver if I first do not get acquainted with the kind of problems that are associated with relationships and marriages? So let's look at possible problems in marriage and relationship. Number one, communication problems. Communication problems. You can be talking and not be communicating. Now let me give you a good example. The bar here was here, her name may be Totonia, may be money, may be Kika Senior, may be so. Now you timidly are dear, so you are dear, so near the yard I have spoken, but I have said nothing. I'm going to repeat myself. Tia dear, make a can. The bar here was here, Timishania, may be Totonia, may be money, may be Sicinia, may be so. Near Gia, dear, so you are dear, so. A money, a man now to two I have spoken, but I have said nothing. And God heard. And he, the, the person listening to me will ask, so what is the point? In, 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 in among our shanties, we call it metaphorical language. I can speak and I'm not saying anything. It's coded language. I see every night a tutu near me, be none near me, be kicker senior, maybe so now, and you mean now to two year, my dear, not the year. What is the point? Am I saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm not communicating. I'm speaking, but I'm not communicating. Honorable Halfa, oh, yeah, to two near my friend, near my man, near Messi, senior, my son. Definitely. <laughs> so the problem is that we can be talking and not communicating. Sometimes a woman can talk for 30 minutes and she is not making any sense to her man. 
So when I talk about communication as a problem, yesterday I was talking about people skills. One of the things that you need to develop to be able to have a sharp people skills is communicating or communication skills. Be a very good communicator. Be a very good communicator and in, and in communicating, uh, one of the finest things that you can be able to master is your ability to captivate the heart and the attention of people. Everybody make us everybody's listening to me rapidly. That's a communicating skill. I remember many years ago, Louis Farrakhan visited Ghana in the, in the days President Rawlings was the head of state. Louis Farrakhan spoke for almost six hours, five hours, five hours, 40 something minutes. I sat by my television, and Farrakhan is a very good communicator. Farrakhan can captivate your attention. You will listen to him for as many. I mean, that is one thing that preachers must develop. The, the preachers coming up these days shout a lot, but they lack that ability to captivate you, your attention, until they are done. Along the way, they lose their audience. And that skill is something that we need to be able to develop. I will develop further. Number two problems in uh, relationships and marriages. Financial problems. You can never solve a problem until you acquaint yourself with the problem. Discover the problem. Financial problems have collapsed many marriages. When I went to the United Kingdom and I realized how so many marriages have collapsed, it has pushed a lot of women into lesbianism. Oh yeah. Yeah. I went to a particular community around the Broadwater Farm area and I saw a sad scenario. Women that their husband came to, you know, carry them up and brought them to England. Now, they have, you know, divorced their husbands. They don't even want a man in their lives. Financial problems. And they know that their biggest problem is not crater. Iska. Crater is not a problem. Because the person who hired or who is paying for the mortgage is paying all the bills. So you can't come and live with them and not pay anything. This is why, even if you are staying with your mother, you pay bills. Husband and wife, they share bills and they pay bills. Your own brother will charge you. It's not like charging you, oh, tia dine ka with naketia. You are there. You cannot just come and eat and sleep. Because every day, I mean, if you want to be nice and sweet with people abroad, Going into the bathroom or using the shower morning, evening, that person is going to be very cross with you. Because the water bills are going when, when around this time, winter, you know, the heating bills are just going to go up. Just like that. It is one time. You are piling the bills up. Yeah. So financial problems is one of the th I knew a very beautiful young lady, husband came up from Atlanta, pick her up. They went. A young lady worked like a horse. That is one of the things that the young man loved her for. And then realized that whilst she is working the joint account, this guy is spending all the money from the joint account. Buying houses for girls in Accra, you know, buying cars, cars and shipping them, clearing them with her money. So she decides, okay, we won't stop joint account. What I will do is that. I, anything that I will want to do for myself, I will do it. She buys a land. She builds a house. The moment the man found out that she was building, marriage collapsed. 
as I'm talking to you right now, they are in court in Atlanta right now. Financial problems. The problems begins especially when the woman is earning more money than the man. If you are not deeply rooted in Christ, you will have crisis. The insecurity alone will collapse the marriage. So before you say you do, you need to be able to understand the demography, the nitty gritty, TRC. You are not just going to be the woman, no, no. And so the structures must be set right. How do we want to manage our finances? Everybody keep the ears. We have a common fund. I take care of the children or do we put our monies together or we don't have anything like your money, my money, every money is our money. You know, when you are earning less, it's easy to advocate that. It's very easy to advocate that. You know, so we need to sit down and agree on a structure. The Bible said two cannot work together except they be agreed. Sit down and let us agree on something. If not, financials who collapse the marriage or the relationship. And this is why we encourage people, you are caught in, you are not yet married. Don't buy a house together. Don't make a joint account. Don't buy a car together. Don't build a house together. Don't build or invest in a property together. The tendency that you will not marry each other is 100%. And therefore, you keep yourself out of trouble. As I'm speaking to you right now, a great gospel musician is at court right now. They are selling their matrimonial home. The court says, sell it off. Let's split the money. Give everybody 50% and everybody walk away. Why should it be like that? That even is not a blessing. Your matrimonial home is on sale. Financial problems. All right? The next is sex, sex related problems I have seen so many marriages collapse so many relationships collapse you met a girl today you want to sleep with her today she says no wait you are driving from Kumasi to Accra wife is sitting next to her they don't talk it can be there six months I didn't hear a person she says so and I'm now here. I took my problem. It's just, it is the biggest of all the problems. All the problems, this one is the biggest. Sex related problems. This is one of the reasons why many of the guys cheat. Sex related problems. It is a problem that you need to master and overcome. Next kind of problems in relationships are parenting problems or parental problems. Raising children is an issue, especially in a cosmopolitan area. Accra, Kumase, London, America, New York, New Jersey, Frankfurt, Stuttgart, Paris, Amsterdam, The Hague, Raising children in a cosmopolitan area, whether you are married or a single mother, single father, is a big issue. Huge. And so everybody who is watching us right now, learn the lessons right now because the days where we had our mothers helping us and all that are disappearing. Are disappearing. This is the reason why the UK government pays a lot of money to um, the nursing mother. And the nursing mother, instead of you know, giving the child to a nanny and going to work, they rather stop working and take care of the child. Because the money you will give to the nanny is far bigger than you taking care of the child. And so those things create problems. I have seen a husband going to work at night, the wife by day, and they plan, you, I take the children to school, you pick them up. And they can be crossing with each other for like one week and they have not met. But they live in the same house. 
And so these are serious problems that you need to discover to be able to solve. Parent, I mean, when we got married, myself and my daddy, and we had our first baby, um, I went to every bookshop in Accra and I couldn't find a single book on parenting at the time. Because we were new to parenting and I'm talking about Christian parenting and we couldn't find any literature or material on parenting. It was later that Bishop Doug wrote a book and you know others started writing from America and all that. But there was no book on parenting. We wanted to know how to be a father, how to be a Christian mother, how to raise your children. There was no material like that. And so it was a problem. And even a problem now, you know, how people, uh, because dealing with that is also an authority issue. I have been in England and a, a man and his wife brought their issue and their case. And the case was that um, if I correct the children, my husband counters it. If I say to the children, stop it, my husband said, leave them alone in their presence. Mom, can I have an ice cream, please? I say, no. Husband says, come, let me go give it to you. Authority issue. We are going to learn to affirm and authenticate, you know, validate what the other person says. Mommy says no, daddy says no. Period. This is how you tell me you love your wife. Not with a teddy bear. Yeah. People who, who are still infants and growing up napios from the Hebrew, they are the people who buy teddy bears. I will prove my love to you. If the children come to me and I say no, they know they will not even try their mother. It will be the same answer. They won't try it. Validation. Validate her. That is love. Not buying teddy bears. I bought you a perfume. We do it all the time. But let your children know that these guys, their love is their love. Your love is your love. Next kind of problems. Fertility problems. Oh, fertility, it's a big problem. It's a huge problem. So before you say you do, you should be able to envision, should we meet this kind of problem? What are we going to do? You know, we have the tendency, as I'm speaking right now, oh, we will break that in the name of Jesus. Mm. Don't brush it off quickly like that. Because others have been breaking it for some time now. And it's not broken yet. So, let us, sometimes the Lord is stretching you and the Lord is trying your faith and the Lord is testing your heart and sometimes the Lord has a stipulated period of time for you. The miracle will come. Do you know Apostle Amweni has a very big, big testimony concerning fertility? Apostle Amweni and his wife, they went through a protracted time of no child, childlessness. When the miracle was coming, one, two, three, triplets. After over 30 years. Yeah. So, we should be able to sit down that you can be a chairman of a, a, a massive denomination and be childless. If that happens, what do we do? It's a problem. It's a problem. I mean, there are things that we need to sit down and critically, analytically assess. Oh, it's very easy for them. Oh, I will love you just as you are. I didn't marry a child. I married you. There are things that can affect your love. The sweetness will vanish. Yeah. Fertility. And this is where it leads me to the next thing. In-laws and outlaws. In-laws and outlaws. That's where they come in. 
That is where they are now going to. We move the boo here in Mutia. Who can any Mutia? Then I will see catch your sending Huni Akwawi. Abaya Jini to adopt and you are going to have people saying things like that. See, if you are not, if you are not aware, no one else is aware. No one can hear. Can I say one Kenya? Yeah, other people are going to have a say as if they 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 were, they were the ones that you were. So. These are possible problems and before you say you do, we should be able to sit down to analyze all these things. Apart from fertility, in-laws and outlaws. I mean, there are clearly sisters of men who will definitely not work. They come, they just want you to pay their bills and all that. I know a young uh, uh, man in uh, Ashiaman. This guy is a lazy guy. He will never work. And uh, what uh, the mother of this guy does is that goes to all the in-laws. And she gathers it and go and give it to this lazy cocoon who is doing nothing. And uh, oh, my in-law, can you give me something to give to my son? Can you give me something to give? Them? This is how this guy sitting in a shaman is living his life. We need somebody who should boldly look in your eyes and tell you, Jai Jimmy. I mean, you can't just, you know, and grow for man, never her wall sitting, doing nothing, and your sisters come and they eat and they leave the place there, and nobody is able to put them in order and all stuff like that. And they are irresponsible, reckless, and careless, and they and all that kind of thing. In laws, if we don't put them in boundaries, and sometimes they feel like in your Bema, and do you know how we have suffered and struggled? And where did you come from? Then, because of you, he has stopped taking care of us, and you are a witch, and you are a dad, and you know, these are possible problems. Yeah, would do in your Nisika. Sometimes, uh, I mean, I I know there was a situation like that. The lady lives in France. She built a beautiful house at uh, uh, Malam, um, you know, Bawi is that location. Massive mansion, and then this guy dies, and all this while the family thought that the house belonged to the man. They went into paperwork and realized that the man didn't have a dime in that particular thing. Sometimes we're looking out for properties and we realize that the property is somebody's labor. The next possible thing is what I just mentioned proper, property related problems. Property related problems. Dr. Grace Buedu, he family people friends workers ubiaya attention is on property you know it is very easy for people to um, fight over funerals okay now if you see them building up a big funeral there is a reason for it and there must be a back end for it property so, what you should be able to understand when it comes to let's take this as a case study. The co founder of Access Bank, who passed on with his wife in the plane crash with few people. The man has so many properties, including the latest one he, he built and moved in in December. I don't see, I don't think there is any mansion like that in Nigeria. Now, if there is no clear will, that's a lot of problems he has created. He has created a problem. I know people who have created a lot of problems. 
you know, in my hometown. There are properties massive and they cannot even paint it. Because most of those properties are in court. Nobody lives in them for years. And they cannot even be maintained. So property related problems. The last one I will share and then we'll be on our way. Offenses related problems. Offenses related problems. We will be going to question and answers very soon. But what I will want you to understand that before you say you do, I want you to know that relationship and marriage is complex more than you think. There are things that we may even teach here you will never meet. You will go and meet something totally different. And it has its own issues. Absolutely. My father was married to my mother for almost 70 years. 70 years plus. If my father was alive today, it would have been his 103 birthday. He passed and we buried him three years ago. Passed at the age of 100. Now, such a man, one of the things that he was always trying to teach us were the concepts of life. So sometimes I ask, what are your regrets? What are your regrets? And mostly his regrets were in the line of marriage and relationship. Because his first marriage didn't work. His second marriage didn't work. It was his third marriage with my mother that turned out to be a success. So that's where the lessons are for him. So everybody that is watching us, take your time and learn. And this is what this whole forum is all about. Take your time and learn. Nobody has it all. Nobody knows it all. We are all still learning on a daily basis. Yes, sir. Yeah. We are all still learning. And by the grace of God, we can only stop learning when we die. And so may the Lord help us and grant us grace. The moment you are at the result-oriented season, this is the season where you marry purpose, you marry the dimension of maturity, and you marry problem-solving dimension as well. May the Lord bless the reading and uh, the dissemination of his word. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you praise. You are worthy to receive honor, praise, worship, and honor, adoration as never before. I pray that you will prepare our hearts and cause us to read the fruits of our labor in Jesus precious name amen and amen now today um, I will have two things done first of all we will take the questions and uh, answer them and secondly I am going to lead a short time of prayer and ministration for relationships and marriages and lastly we are going to have a very special uh, time of seed sowing uh, online today and so let us be able to get all the details the numbers are on your screen right now you can be able to connect send in your questions and then let's go ahead and work on them stay tuned Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for sticking and staying with us. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your, your commitment. We trust that it's been an eye-opener for you in the name of Jesus. Okay, so the question that we have here says that um, it's a question on communication. It says, what do you do if someone is too busy to communicate? Can you also decide to ignore him or her by not calling him <laughs> or her? <laughs> And only be nice when he or she decides to call answer to that is initiate the communication there are people who are not good communicators at all some men are introverts they want to just keep to themselves so you initiate the communication 
And initiating communication comes only always with a question. Hey, what to the Abba? I have started something. <laughs> Definitely the question will then be, hey, do you know Abba? Mm -hmm. And then I can start communicating. So initiate the communication. Yes, sir. Initiate the communication. Thank you, Prof. Um, second question says that um, how long should two people who are adults and Christians remain I don't know. It says remain as friends. I want to believe that what you are trying to say remain in a, maybe in a relationship before okay. they get married. How long, how long should that period of courtship or dating, how long should it be? Minimum one year, maximum two years. The reason is because um, when a relationship is protracted, the dangers and the temptations are too many. You know, you are pregnant, you have one child, another child, and this is how come we have people who have been living together for 10, 15 years. They have two, three children without paying any bride price because they didn't plan all that. The dating was just too long. So make it a point. Minimum a year, maximum two years. You are settled. God bless you. Amen. So, minimum a year, maximum two years. Try pa. <laughs> okay. We are waiting for the next question. All right. Okay. Somebody said, please, I heard that after marriage, there's nothing like love. <laughs> only responsibility <laughs> how true is this Apostle Jeffrey you know possibly should answer that because he's been married for I mean I see you and your beautiful wife the chemistry is sweet is lovely is loving so how come there's no love I see visibly love it's what you make it mm hmm it doesn't just happen. It's meant to happen. It's made to happen. You make it happen. It's just like you buy a phone. You whatever, whatever you want or a computer, whatever you want it to do is what you put in there. And then it produces whatever you, you've made it to be. Yeah. So Love is hard, you make it. That's right. Yeah. Open so don't say a Amen. You have a friend who is so close to you to the extent that you have feelings for each other. Then later on you meet another guy who is also interested in you. And you are also interested in him. Please, at this point, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> you are torn in between two people. The Bible said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. We are not just talking relationship and marriage. This is not a, a secular radio station or television station discussing anything. We are looking at this in the spectacle of Christianity. Mm -hmm. In the spectacle of Christ. What will Christ do? Now, the point is this. Take them both before the throne of God. Don't be carried away with your, your feelings. Be led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Be led by this. Pray about it. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. How can you be, you know, throwing your whole life into a lifetime commitment and you don't you have not heard from God. You have not heard from heaven. You don't have heaven's backing. I think that is a big error. So it's not about what you feel and only. It is also about how God is leading you. Look at it from that perspective as well. Amen. Well, somebody says we all make mistakes. But how is it that some women keep making the same mistakes in choosing a partner? 
and the person is trying to find out can this be an issue that has to do with an altar I mean relationship and marriages has too many spirituality that goes with it this is why I'm trying to draw your heart also into that positive spirituality a relationship with God and through the Holy Spirit so that you can be able to there are many demonic spirits that are blatantly fighting singles and married people at the same time and so definitely there are altars there are spells there are attacks that comes against one of the things that the enemy is too much afraid of is the power of two okay if two people put their hearts in synergy the enemy is terrified mm -hmm. absolutely terrified and so he will do everything to tear you apart and that you never have that synergistic bond so please pray together stand together and uh, have fun together amen. amen please I want to ask what should one do when one's husband doesn't disclose his financial help to his family and friends <laughs> Financial issues are a big issue. And I want to say that for those of you who are already going through the turbulence of that, our counsel is going to be take it to God in prayer. One, two, openly discuss it with him. Let's not brush things under the carpet. Let's sit down and talk. We need to talk about this. If the relationship is going to go any further, let's discuss but for the people who are yet to enter into uh, marriage I think that you have an opportunity to build a better foundation before you get into it sit down and put structures this is how we want it to be mm -hmm. this is how we want it to yeah. be what do you think or why, how should we do it but let's agree before the relationship starts because finances can destroy beautiful relationships. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Finances can destroy a beautiful relationship. And you see, man of God, Amos said, how can two work together except they be agreed? That's right. Let's agree on, on things before we start. I know people who are going to get married, they've not even decided among themselves, where will we go to church after we marry? Yeah. Yeah. In the mind of the girl, me juma me o maso me nya re se me jai inti me come aso no ni sa me wa in the mind of the man to he is expecting that when we marry you will come to my church sit down and agree on it it does not even necessarily have to mean that you have to go to the guy's church both of you can decide that after marriage you want to go to a different church it's it's an agreement sit down let's think about it let's think through it let's let's come to some agreement before we proceed come on before we marry and then after we marry, you want us to go to Aladura. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, let's take the next few questions. Please, can you marry someone that you are not attracted to? <laughs> totally and absolutely no. Now, let me use Hosea and Gumas marriage. Okay. God said to Hosea, go and marry a halot. That's very easy to do. But the difficult thing was and love her. Okay. Now God is the judge of motives, the heart and conscience. So if you don't love her, God knows. He knows. He knows. So to love somebody you don't normally want to love. Love is a strange beast. Whilst it comes awake, you can't tame it. Now the point is this. Uzziah was able to live with Guma because God commanded him to love her. So the point then is if I am not attracted to you I will be cringing when you touch me. When you want to kiss me. It's just like you know definitely you will feel like A, B, C or D. So Everybody who is watching us right now, I mean, do not make that error. 
of trying to be married to somebody you are not attracted to because you are going to live with this person all your life. I was with you, be deal with you, and you should be proud of. Mm -hmm. You should be excited. When you need a picture, you are excited. You should be proud of. God bless you. Prof, what's your idea of a guy having a female bestie? Is that, is that it? Eh? Having a female bestie when he's in a serious relationship and vice versa, which means that what will it be if you are also a girl, you have a, a, a male bestie? When both of you are in a serious relationship. Song of Solomon chapter 8 verse number 4. The Bible said, I charge you uh, daughters of Zion by the dazzles of the fields. Do not stir up love. Do not awaken love until it pleases. In other words, there are certain unwholesome, unhealthy relationships that will not help. Don't entertain it. They are the little foxes. They would destroy your relationship. I'm telling you. Women have a tendency at a point. They can take it to a point. At a point, they will start getting jealous about this other person and all that. It would destroy the whole thing. The jealousy of men are even more worse than women. At a point, you know, this whole thing would develop, evolve into something that you guys are not ready to handle. So don't start it at all. Your friend is my friend. If you want the best marriage and relationship, your friend is my friend. My friend is your friend. Mm -hmm. Any friend we can keep together mm -hmm. can be a friend. Thank you. Any friend we both can keep together cannot be a friend. That's why you can hear things like, he's our family friend, our family doctor, our family lawyer. They have decided to keep that relationship. Thank you. Be careful of people who want to be your friend and they don't want your wife to be their friend. <laughs> yeah, be careful of people like that. They just want you as their friend. They don't want your wife to be their friend. Be careful of those who want to be your wife's friend, but they don't want to be your husband's friend. Amen. Man of God, in our relationship, if, if, if my wife is not your friend, you can't be my friend. Absolutely. It's as simple as Absolutely. that. It's as simple as that. And especially those who want to have friendship with just one partner in the marriage, especially the guy. He wants to be the friend of the guy. He doesn't want to be the friend of his wife. Usually, nine out of ten times, those people, they have an ulterior motive oh, for wanting to have a relationship. And then in that you don't do me now down for or cry a baby for cry. Is it a good idea to let your spiritual father choose a partner for you? This is a complex one, but um, let let me put it this way. Sometimes God can be leading um, a spiritual father figure to a particular person. Let's say that somebody is trying to make a mistake. A choice that will not be a blessing. Mm -hmm. Just like Abraham or Isaac sent his uh, servant Eliza mm -hmm. to go find a wife. The whole concept is the, this matchmaking concept that they have migrated it online and sometimes and all that. The point is this. Once in a hundred, a spiritual person, an anointed person can tell you, this woman is your wife. Or that one is your husband. But the reason why we do not encourage that too much is because after that choice has been made, you are the person that is going to live with this person. Mm -hmm. And so if you are not convinced, you don't have a personal conviction about this person, then I will not encourage. Because at the end of the day, when crisis and problems arise, you say, mm -hmm. Your spiritual father, 
Yeah. I mean, we, we hear people yeah. say all kinds of things. Yeah. I mean, concerning even the vows. <laughs> yeah. It even vows. People are making these assertions. Can you imagine when it comes to choice? Thank you. Amen. So, the little I will add is that your spiritual father can guide you. Thank you. But the ultimate choice is yours. Because you will have to take responsibility for the marriage. Come on. And let me also say that even when your spiritual father has guided you, it does not mean that the marriage will be devoid of problems. Come on. Because there are people, the more there's a small problem, no. Hey. No. Take responsibility for the marriage yourself. Marriage is work. If you see any marriage that is looking nice, listen, if you see any building in town that is always looking nice, it's because somebody is constantly maintaining it. Come on. Constantly. Obi Guhu paint. Obi Yamon primer. Obi Yes. That is how come that building is always looking nice. If you see a building too that is run down, it may even be bigger than the other one, but it is totally run down. It's because nobody is maintaining it. Come on. If you see a good marriage, it's because people are at work. They are working it out day in and day out. Come on. Amen. So what do you do if a woman's sexual libido is higher than her husband's? <laughs> oh, there are there are there are relationships like that. Mm -hmm. I mean there are marriages like that. Um where the the husband feels that now uh, that my wife is just too much. I mean, I can't keep up to it. I believe that in a situation like that, let's sit down, let's talk about it. I mean, everything must be discussed. This is where communication comes through. I deal with AI too much. Maybe there is something that we can, your libido is very high. Do I want to keep up with it? Okay, how many times do you want to have sex in a week? So that we, let's discuss yeah, and agree. Know. Time timetable. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, and uh, I believe that when you are able to agree, you can have a very beautiful relationship. God bless you. All right, we'll just take just three more questions and we'll be done. Is it good to tell your current boyfriend everything about your past relationships? <sighs> Honestly speaking, not everything is necessary. Everybody has a past. We need to be transparent. That moment, that moment, that relationship and that marriage starts. But there are things that are just not necessary. I mean, uh, I go around town, I see something. There are things that are worth not mentioning same thing there are things that are in your past that are worth not mentioning it's not edifying it won't help it will not add anything but of course there are vital information like mm -hmm. we are in this relationship before i say i do mm -hmm. i need to let you know because one day that child will re will surface one day that child will suffer. So I really will have to bring it up before it comes up unknowingly. So know the ones that are essential that needs to be brought up or the ones that are not necessary. So look at it from that way. Amen. Man of God, I mean, I'm in a relationship with a guy whom I am supporting financially due to some financial struggles he's having. However, it's been several months now and things are still not going well for him. And that is causing a financial drain and frustration on me. What would be the best thing to do? One, I think that um, our counsel that when we sit down and talk. I mean, talking, the communication is a lifeline to mm -hmm. everything. Everything we should be discussing. 
um, let the man know the pressure or the strain that is bringing to you. And let us adjust so that you don't kill yourself for nothing. Um, myself, I have a story. Apostle Jeff, I have a story. Many great people have stories of how their wives help them and all that. Mm -hmm. But we all help ourselves whilst they were helping us. You cannot just relax and sometimes be saturated with the help of a woman not doing anything to help yourself and carelessly enjoying somebody's sweat and labor. So please, let's sit down and talk and let the person understand that I have gotten to my breaking point or limits. And so that he can be able to start treating you know, your, your leniency and generosity with agency and with, and with care. Thank you, sir. And be careful that there's, there's a difference between helping somebody to support the person and there's a, there's, a, there's a difference between that and when you have actually become complicit in sponsoring the person's laziness. <laughs> because there are some people, when they realize that there is some help they are getting from you, they are not ready to tie up their laces and push themselves to the next level. Rather, they start depending on, on, your, on the stipend you give to them to the point that they now begin to even see it as a right. And if you don't give it to them, then they rather get angry. <laughs> but brah, <laughs> my man is scholarship. <laughs> Hallelujah. And even if, Apostle, even if this is not yet marriage, then the lady does not even have any responsibility to be doing all that. If a person is in problems, you can help. Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't be a habitual help. Say, oh, how I become a me how. I tell people when we are caught in anywhere in our courtship process, we don't cook for a man. Mm -hmm. We don't wash for a man. We don't sleep in a man's house. And let me add two to it. Mm -hmm. We don't sponsor people. Mm -hmm. We don't bring financial commitments. You know, this is my build of done. I don't pay your bills. You don't make demands. Buy this for me. Buy. No, it doesn't come in at all. I want a new bag. I want a new bag. Uh, my mother is dead. My rent is up. No, not, none of that is my responsibility. No financial commitment. The tendency I may not marry you or you may not marry me is still 100%. And this is where after me do see Kerry, na man ware o no peso di anto anya ma be. So uh, don't push too much because you are not yet a wife or a husband. Thank you. What advice would you give to a pastor who realizes his two children of about six years old and four years old are not his? <laughs> you know, today I, somebody sent me a video about a man, it happened somewhere in America, about a man who actually went to jail for five years because he was not able to provide child support for, for a, the child in question. And the wife took him to court. He was jailed five years. Now he protests his innocence. After five years, he comes out of jail. And then they actually go and do a DNA test on the boy. And it turns out that the boy is not his. And they asked the woman in court that, do you know the father of the child? And the woman said, yes, I know. She says, yes, I know. I'm in touch with him. Wow. In court. Man, I could dim five years. <laughs> so, <I'll> over to you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that sometimes this DNA test comes in too late. Clear your mind as early as possible. Do it early as possible. I mean, if you are watching as you are not sure about, don't wait until something comes up and before. Take a test. Today, just to clear your mind. Why do you think that we, 
during marriage counseling and before marriages, we ask people to go and do a, a totally full medical report of yourself. Not just on hepatitis, BHI, no, full medical report. And these days, we don't even bother to send them to do and bring. No. We send you to a particular place. Mm -hmm. Go here and they will sort you out. Because you may think that you have to go to people who have to go to people who have to go No. People will know that this is, a, this is a reputable company. Let them do that. And then so that we can be okay. Because we were here where the footballers went to court and mm -hmm. uh, three or four children, yeah. none of them were his. I mean, this is wickedness. And by this time, your heart is already into the children. As for the financial commitments, I don't want to talk about. Yeah. So, don't, if you are a pastor, now you find out that mm -hmm. the Bible said, mm -hmm. I'm so, I'm so for mommy. Hey. Me makachi o se sofo yero hone si e juma bo. You should be good in a bedroom. The thing is that why yero hone not drive the beer or shiri. E di jina sofo ma me ba kusi keep our dear. <laughs> Only one, our dear Nagu. Then I'm catching. Oh, my so for my baby, I could see Kim Asa. So then, the yeah, they show, yeah, they show, and you are making, you are going ahead with the financial commitments and everything. About some media, I have seen who pay deeper one group of people who pretend, who can act, who can come to church. I saw for this of my mail there into stuff, but what you can do in this situation for the sake of the children, um, because sometimes these children, I had a situation like that one day we were in church and a woman walked in with two children and said that these two children uh, they, are, they are children of your brother. So I pick up the phone and I called my brother and I said to my brother, hey Jack, um, uh, there's this woman here, do you know? First of all, I took a picture of the woman and then I sent it to my brother. And then when I sent the, the picture to my brother, I said, do you know this woman? And then he replied and said, oh yes, I do. I said, how? He said, you know, one time she made allegations over me that, and then we went to court at Adenta and the case I have two DNA reports from different places that says that these children are not mine I said can you send me the DNA reports, the DNA reports came, yes it wasn't so I said to the woman, okay there are two DNA reports that say that these children are not mine, what do you want, and then said I just want school fees for my children I said okay, no problem then I said to my brother, don't worry, we will handle it. And then we saw, just for the sake of those children, I mean, very intelligent young man standing there, beautiful young lady. I said, let's support them. We help people at orphanage all the time. We help people in church all the time. Mm -hmm. We help people on the streets all the time. People we don't know, we help them. Mm -hmm. Just help them because they are, you know, and, and that's it, nothing else. We a, 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 a thing because of A, B, C, O. Just help them. Just for the sake of these uh, children you've loved before, you have supported before, just help them like you don't know them anywhere. Okay. And you just help them. But with this of Mami Echidi, I have the own copy. It didn't know. But these are, you cannot keep living with such a woman. The Bible has already given you the license that the only way uh, or only reason you can divorce is infidelity. And she has made it for you if you can handle it. Fine. 
fine. But I mean, we didn't free quotation. Now we're preaching. I'm more at I will be said. Let's open our Bibles to Second Jeremiah. And I'm saying Second Jeremiah. If you in it, first let me take us. If you in it, Second Jeremiah says it. I dear be a honour more who preaching now when you bow be any way to me puffra. So please let us be able to come to that point and to that place where yes we we stand for the right uh let him let let her go. And then a friend of mine, Apostle, mm-hmm. you may know him. went home an afternoon around this time after lunch and found out that another friend of ours yes. was sleeping with his wife on his matrimonial but I'm talking about two pastors you know in this country sleeping with his wife he had a gun he didn't use it what he decided to do with two krumah but then he left this country he started life fresh in the United Kingdom divorced this woman is remarried people criticize that marriage so far then why worry for further away this in the own car as It is not public. But this is the truth why he divorced and remarried. La ila ila la. Yeah. Yeah. So Oh no no no. I I two friends. I, I, I am, I'm also privy to another case like that. Wow. Oh yes. Two friends. Yes. I'm also privy to another case like that. Yes. I mean, two friends on the two pulpiteers. We preach him away. We preach him away. Yeah. Yes. Koena we nent we yere dam paso. Open. I know what yeah. the, the thing I love about this is that basically yeah. it's not in a public domain. People are rather accusing him falsely. And then when Jawi they suddenly you just left your wife and check one year, wow, are for fro. And he's not responding to that. He doesn't even want to know anything about Ghana. Mm-hmm. We're too now. The lady she got he got married to is a British citizen. And they 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 have in their life there. Yeah. So for last question, um, we still have a few other questions, but we would we would have to carry carry them forward. Next week, like I said, we'll be doing boys, boys and girls, girls. Amen. It's a forum for boys alone and a forum for girls alone. And if I call you a girl, it, it does not mean to degrade you or to demean you. I mean, I, I mean, we want a place where we can be ourselves. You understand me? Uh-huh. So next week we'll be doing boys, boys, and girls, girls. And watch out for the flyer shortly. Amen. But last question for today so that the man of God can continue to minister to us. Has there ever been a time in your marriage that you felt like you married the wrong person? This is why I tell people marry your friend. Because when the butterfly season is over, you at least you still have your friend. I married my friend. I I this girl I got married to my day is fun. Every every day is fun. Mm-hmm. You know. And so has it occurred to me I got married to the wrong person? No. If I should marry again after twenty five years, I will marry her again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I 
after 25 years, I will marry her again. I mean, that is, the, the chemistry is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So marry your friend. Have fun. And it's, you know, our marriage is not like, uh, you know, in share. No. Every time is fun. Yes, buddies, buddies. Uh, I just left home um, and I went to Alabaster City and then I came here. My wife sent me a message. I'm already missing you. But I just left home this morning. That is the chemistry. I'm already missing you after three hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, so if by now no text messages, you know, for one week your husband doesn't call you, this doesn't, something is broken down. A lifeline is, there's no life. Yeah. Three hours, she's sending a message. That's fun. You know, we still have the flame burning after 25 years. Yeah. So, sometimes our children come to our bedroom and say, hey, mon fama se mon kobra, we don't come and disturb us. Come later and talk to me. Yeah. So, except the person is not your friend, then you can have regrets and, and all that. And I keep telling the people lessons all the time. Choice. Choice. The choice you make is important. Amen. 